So when looking at division in this case, ladies and gentlemen, um, again, we're doing the same operation. This is basically just telling us to take f of x and divide it by g of x. Right? So all we're simply going to do is take the top function, f of x, which is x squared plus 4, and divide it by 2x plus 1. Okay? Now, there is a difference here. When adding, subtracting, and multiplying functions, you just take the domains of the functions, and that's going to be your domain of your operation. Did I forget change it one? Oh, g of x, square root of x minus 4. Thank you. OK, so sorry about that. So now we're looking at this, and we say, OK, oh, wait, I'm doing g and oh, OK. So we have some domain restrictions. Let's look at this. Let's, let, me, let me actually rewrite this. Let's go and look at the domains of each of these first. Domain of x squared plus 4, don't need to worry about that. That's all real numbers. Ooh, x minus 4. So remember, didn't we, did we do that one? Yes, we did. We already figured that one out is 4 to infinity, right? OK. But we've got to be careful now when we're using division, because you've got to think division is putting one function in the denominator. And we know that the denominator cannot equal 0, right? So when I do f of g of x, I'm now putting g of x in the denominator. So can 4 be a value anymore? No, because what happens when x is equal to 4? It's 0, right? We can't have, it, can be, it can be 4 here, just with square root of x minus 4. But it, now it can't be 4, because that makes the denominator equal to 0. So you have to understand division brings in that extra constraint that, oh, crap, now we, now we could possibly be divided by 0. So the domain here is going to be parentheses 4, comma, infinity. Right? The x squared plus 4 doesn't affect the domain. Because guys, that's all real numbers, right? There's no restrictions on x squared plus 4, right? So we're good there. 